I would love to see people take more responsibility for their actions. Hi, welcome to Nature Magic. Today I'm talking to Aga Grandelitz. Aga is a multi-award winning art director, graphic designer and wildlife illustrator. She studied graphic design at the Academy of Fine Arts Gdansk and shortly after completing her master's in 2003 with the highest honors, she set up her graphic design practice and started working for a large variety of Polish businesses. In 2006, in search of adventure and inspiration, Aga moved to Ireland where she still lives and works. Her first book created with Ron McGuire, Dr. Hibernica Finch's Compelling Compendium of Irish Animals, published by Little Island, was shortlisted for the Irish Book Awards in 2018, the Literary Island Children's Book Award in 2019, and won the Honour Award for Illustration in the CBI's Book of the Year Award 2019. Since the book's publication, Aga has been involved in working on biodiversity related projects, contributing to them with her design and illustration skills. And now she works towards making it her new career path. Her second book, Remarkable Creatures, A Short Guide to Irish Disappearing Animals, was published in June 2021 by Natural World Publishing. Aga is using all her skills to play her part in tackling the biodiversity crisis that is challenging our world. Hi Aga, it's lovely to see you and to talk to you and you're very welcome to the Nature Magic podcast. Hello Mary, nice to talk to you as well and uh, I'm here in Dublin, Rathfarna, so it's great that we can talk over Zoom. Yeah, that's one, meet. exactly, that's one thing about the lockdown is everybody's got mm. used to zoom and I have taken a screenshot of Aga here because she's got a beautiful mural behind her on the wall of the discus fish and another fish and I'll put that on Instagram and would you like to tell us what your line of work is? Yes so I've been working mostly as a graphic designer for the last I don't know 23 years but Last over the last few years, I decided to focus more on wildlife illustration because I always loved animals since I was a very young child. I loved animals, nature, I loved gardening, just whatever uh, involved, you know, the, the, the nature. So uh, for the last few years, I've been focusing on that and leaving graphic design a bit behind. So in the past, I used to love it, but now I kind of more, um, more enjoy more drawing you know painting and even designing for uh, organizations that are related to nature biodiversity yes you're so creative and one of the big things we're talking about today is aga's new book and it's called remarkable creatures a guide to some of ireland's disappearing animals and the illustrations are fantastic and i'm so impressed with the book because it's simple there's tips there is little activities with every animal. The work is just, it's, it's brilliant. Do you want to tell us about okay. Remarkable Creatures? Yes, so um, I decided to, to write about animals that are, as you said, uh, you know, disappearing, they're endangered or even critically endangered in, in Ireland. It's just to highlight that we have to change something in our behavior and our actions because otherwise you know all these creatures might might be gone in 10 or 20 years i don't want uh, to re them to repeat the stories of wolves or eagles you know it, even though eagles have been reintroduced recently in in canto donegal so that's that's cool that's the first step to uh, to make this population grow and uh, i decided so i like creating uh, books for children and I decided to include some activities here in this book. So every animal has, uh, for every animal, I prepared an activity that somehow is related either to the animal or to the habitat uh, where it lives. So for example, for the freshwater pearl mussel, which is critically endangered in Ireland, I, 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 decide, I designed an activity which is make a water filter. So just to show kids how pearl mussels filter water and it can be done in a simple simplified way you know, of bottle a filled with gravel little stones branches and you know different other things and that's um, that shows how how nature actually can help to keep our waters clean okay and there are other uh, 
other uh, interesting activities. For example, for the bamboo, great yellow bamboo, which is endangered, um, I created a plant tower with a, with a rock garden, so kids can create something nice, nice little feature in their garden. You know that can keep them busy and they can have something to look after. Like my my son uh, has a little tiny garden in our garden so he plants things that not very often he's not into gardening as much as i am but you now once a year he has this need he goes there and plants a new flower <laughs> and then he keeps watering looking after it and, you know, I, I think it's it's great that's lovely so it's like a tower um made with chicken wire how to make it and what to plant on it and for yes, the barn yeah. owl you have actually yeah. put in building an owl nesting box Yes, um, exactly. So th I'd just like to go through the animals that you focused on. The freshwater pearl mussel, the horsetail sloth weevil, the great yellow bumblebee, the thrift clearwing, which is a moth, the wool gran butterfly, the Atlantic salmon, European eel, the spiny dogfish, white skate, the twite, Eurasian curlew, the barn owl and the golden eagle. Can you tell us the activity for the spiny dogfish? That's a really cool one. Uh, okay, let's have a look. Uh, that was a tooth. Yes, a shark tooth. So make your own uh, faux shark tooth fossil. So we use a clay and we, we shape the tooth, shark's tooth, and then we paint it with um, acrylic paints. So that can be done and it can make a nice necklace. You know, kids love these things. That's so a very fun, yeah. very fun thing for kids to do. So if one of these animals your favourite that you enjoyed working with or do you have a favourite? I think I like the spiny dogfish, maybe because of the name, because I love dogs. <laughs> <laughs> but if you are not a doggy person, there are actually different names for this particular shark. Or rock salmon. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so that's the only one actually that does not include a dog. So it's full dog, <laughs> pike dogfish, spiky dog, white spotted dogfish and rock salmon. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? I keep hearing yeah. new names for different things. Even mm. the Babington leek, which we have growing at the moment, and somebody on Facebook said, oh, yes, here's a picture of the Egyptian walking onion. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> which is true because it bends over and it plants uh -huh. itself and it moves along. But I think oh, the, name, the names, the local names are funny. And what yeah. are the animals apart from the ones in the book or plants that you particularly like? I always loved octopuses. I think they're absolutely amazing. <laughs> it's uh, just they the way they adapt to the environment and that's by you know like changing the the color of the skin the texture of the skin they're so incredible you've seen my octopus teacher on netflix everybody has to watch that my octopus teacher yes no sorry of course yes i did sorry just the title for a moment didn't ring the bell yes yeah i did watch that that was absolutely amazing but then there was a moment in this documentary when the photographer let the octopus die and that was so sad even though oh. they always die so i actually read that even if if they are kept in a tank in captivity they have to die so the way they do it if they don't just wil wilt away if they are fed they just beat their arms oh they just like they it's like they commit suicide because that's oh. the they have to die after they lay eggs. It was really, really heartbreaking. Very, very sad. Yes, exactly. And octopus are so intelligent, so they can learn to open a jar even, you know, but just, you know, trying, uh, trying different techniques. So they're really like, you know, very, very creative. And what is amazing, they don't learn that from their parents because they die straight after they lay they, they uh -huh. eggs. And because they live a solitary life, they don't learn it from other octopuses. So they have to figure out everything on their own. <laughs> that is absolutely incredible. There's even an octopus, even though I don't know if this is scientifically proven, but he predicts the winners of the football and things like that. <laughs> so he's a psychic. <laughs> so, so like the, in, the, in Groundhog, uh, Groundhog Day, what was his name? Phil, right? Phil, the, the <laughs> Grand Groundhog. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you said you had some interesting news that you'd like to tell us today. Yes, so I've been really happy to see that um, the book, um, Remarkable Creatures book, have been uh, featured in Irish Independent. Fantastic! Okay. So there's the section, children's book. Okay. Oh, that's 
Fabulous. Is that today? Yes, it's today. So it says, The Great Escape, the best books for young bookworms to get lost in. (gasps) And there's a few books listed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And um, uh, Remarkable Creatures is one of them. Oh, that's amazing. Well done. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. It's a really nicely produced book. And the illustrations are fantastic. And every single page has something to do and some little facts. So Twite, did you know? Twite likes to update its summer and winter looks. It sports a bright yellow bill in winter and a soft grey one in summer. So what would you like everybody to do to support nature? Whenever, one of the things I notice whenever I travel is the amount of rubbish lying around you know like plastic bottles food wrapping tissues like you know all these sorts of things and there's there are of course places that are nice and clean and that's wonderful but some cities are so incredibly filthy and then are the beaches with all the plastic that gets carried carried away by by the water and in ireland one of the most common offenses are the pullbacks i seriously don't get why some people will do that like for example can you believe that one of my neighbors when she was trimming the hedge around her garden, she collected 130 bags with bone. They were just stuck in the hedge. Oh my gosh. Like, I understand that, you know, people don't That's want horrendous. to carry this away. But then, yeah. okay, if you don't want to carry this away, we really can't for some reasons. You just, you know, hide this pool, like under the grass, dig a yeah. little hole, put the grass in. That's much better than leaving all this plastic bags. Around, yeah, the, you know. those bags really should be compostable by law. Yes, but also, you know, before that happens, is this ice, or, you know, or like just for, I don't know how long it takes to decompose for weeks yeah, or months. Yeah, terrible. So that's, you know, if that would be one thing that the people could do, just, you know, being they, they, they rubbish, they waste, that would be, that would help a lot, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, the, another thing is, which I observe in Ireland is is tree cutting that seems to be quite excessive in my opinion. And I'm talking here about the trees that are removed from in front of the houses and from the streets. And you know, trees add so much uh, beauty to the estates and streets. And it's always heartbreaking for me to see them cut down. Sometimes there is a good reason for that. For example, if there's a storm and a tree is just, you know, breaks. So of course some branches or even the whole tree has to be removed. But sometimes it seems like there's no no valid reason you know and there was a guy in my estate um who living down the road from me and he had brutally trimmed a very pretty elderflower growing behind his back garden on the grass that is actually public property so it wasn't even his tree okay and he left all the branches lying down and was such an eyesore for months yeah. and it was just horrible and I reported this all this mess to the county council but it took like many weeks to for this to be to be removed yeah I think there is a quite a big attitude in this country if you have a tree near to your house that's it's sort of panic we have to mm-hmm. cut the tree down it's too yeah. near to the house yeah. um but if that if the tree isn't damaged and it's going to fall down there is no reason to cut the tree down so you see them being taken out like lines of trees oh yes they were too big too near to the house yeah but see like not all trees produce the roots which go horizontally some roots go down so there's absolutely no risk of damage to the property like cherry trees uh, you know cherry blossom they are quite infamous for having these roots they go horizontally so Mm -hmm. they, they might damage something okay so the good thing here will be don't plant this type of trees in the first place, you know, to yeah. close to the house. Just you now make your research and find the tree which we, the, you know, a good Yeah, fit. with the roots. Yeah, that's a very good tip. And, you know, also about forest, like um, forest, in, I think that Ireland is covered on, there's only 11% of the land in Ireland covered with, with forests. So that's a very long I think it's number. even less, actually. Even it's, less, no, no. Yeah. It's like one of the lowest numbers across the world. I was actually looking into that. It was just absolutely shocking. There are some countries which have even actually zero yeah. <laughs> forest cover, cover. So that's that's even worse. But like, I don't know. See, I'm not an expert here, but do we really need so much uh, grasslands for, for livestock? And do we need so many cows and sheep here in this country? Like, I think it will be managed a bit better. But again, I'm not an expert here. That's just my own opinion that I think it yeah. could be done a bit differently. 
I know it says a contentious topic, but actually yes, the, it is. <laughs> the, inter- the interview on Monday um, with Garold McAvoy, uh, mm-hmm. he is, he's a 21-year-old graduate and he started something called Reforest Nation and he's planted 50,000 trees um, nice. so far. Um, so he, he was also saying whatever about the forest cover, the mm-hmm. majority of it is Sitka spruce, which isn't mm-hmm. good for biodiversity. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of issues to talk about and people get very, yeah, yeah. Um, very, what's the word, roiled yes. <laughs> when, <laughs> when they discuss it. So there's, there's differing opinions there, but mm-hmm. I agree, we need to up the woodland, definitely. Um, do you have any other nature books that you like that may be written by somebody else that you'd like to recommend? In general, I love books that are not only well written, but also beautifully crafted. So, you know, there's, and I know there's so many books which which have amazing illustrations, but then this hideous graphic design, and it's such a, such a terrible shame and what a disappointment even for the writer and, and the illustrator if they had no say in the process. So. Um, there's a publisher, it's quite known, they, they established in 2013 and they are known for producing books the, the way they should be highly engaging on, on many levels. So it, um, this publisher is called Flying Eye Books and there's a series. Oh, interesting. Uh, yes, written and illustrated by uh, Owen Davy and they're just, you know, just beautiful Um they oh. are just perfect little masterpieces of, of design and craftsmanship with a very engaging written content. So the books I have here, it's a bonkers about beetles. That looks a beautiful book. So it's, a, it's quite a large format. Yes, book. but not that many pages. I think it's only like around, I don't know, just my guess, looking at the spine, around 40 pages. So they're really, yeah. really pretty. Uh, they are really good. They, I, I do agree. Some of the nature books just aren't appealing. Every the, page, yeah. Every page is something, something different, something engaging. And uh, what I like, it's um, different use of illustration. So here we have these big images. Yeah. And it's inspiring as well. Really nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's fantastic about frogs. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the beetles. Bonkers about beetles. So even though these illustrations are very stylized, very, very simplified, they still, you can still recognize the animals because it's just so well done. Yeah, and also for kids, I mean, they like having something that they can draw themselves and those mm-hmm. designs they could copy yes, and draw, yeah. True. Yes. They're lovely, I'd love to have wallpapers yeah. made out of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great recommendation, thank you so much. Yes. There's one more book, so I bought it a few months ago. Uh, 32nd Zoology, the 50 most fundamental categories and concepts from the study of animal life. And what I like about this, the first thing I noticed is the amazing design and illustrations. Look at this. This oh, is so unique. Beautiful. Yeah, that's so and Like cool. you don't see books that well designed around. I really recommend that. everyone to have a look at this. This is published by Ivy Press. So 32nd Zoology. Fabulous. They're brilliant suggestions. Thank you, Aga. That's great. Lovely to see um, great illustrations and design as well. You really have to have the two together to make it work. And that's why I'm so impressed with your book, because you've got the information that's just really engaging and, of course, the beautiful illustrations. Mm And if I may, that's uh, that's the previous book um, I, I made. So Dr. Hibernica Finch's Compelling Compendium of Irish Animals. Beautiful. This book has been published in 2018 by uh, Little Island. That's a publisher from, from Dublin. So I, I made this book with Rob, Rob Maguire, who wrote the amazing content. So it's a large and format book. Yes, it's a large format. Fantastic. And it features how many? Thir- 23 animals, I think. So that's the, that's the list. So that's, Brilliant. Air, land, and water. Yes. yes. So we divided this in sections. Yeah. So we have birds, we have uh, amphibians, we have, oh, we have this beautiful, beautifully ugly, not uh, exact out. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't look ugly. It looks beautiful. But yeah, that's my favorite one. Actually. Yeah. It's really <laughs> cool. Really cool. It's so nice to see some different books recommended and especially for the younger age group that are really compelling and interesting. If you had that magic wand, what would you like to do for the planet right now? I think I would love to see people taking more responsibility for the actions. 
know, like little things that everyone can do, like, you know, as I mentioned before, putting rubbish where it belongs, not wasting drinking water, not wasting food, and, and consuming less because our resources are unfortunately limited. Excellent. So by consuming, yeah. I mean, everything like, uh, not just when it comes to food, but um, we don't need to buy as many clothes. We don't need 30 pairs of shoes, you know, things like this. So just to be a bit more, more conscious of, of what we do because it will affect uh, our planet and our future. Like, you know, public uh, transport, you can use that instead of driving. You can use bicycles, you can walk. <laughs> I know a person who uses their car for everything, even if they go to a different house within the same estate. <laughs> so, you know, we don't need to do things like that. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody knows people like that. Yeah. <laughs> we do have two legs as well. We can yes, walk. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> well, we can what, run. We can run. Um, what is heartwarming to see is the young people uh, have changed already. So I have two teenagers and there's this Instagram business called Depop and it's secondhand clothes. So one of my mm -hmm. daughters who's 16 uh, she buys clothes off Depop and there mm -hmm. are kids, other kids who've got fed up of their item yeah. and they put up a little picture and they sell mm -hmm. it secondhand. Mm -hmm. Always the postage is, is expensive, which, which yeah. doesn't help, but it's, mm -hmm. you know, pe that age group has really woken up to all of mm -hmm. this. Very good. That's so, that's so good to see, to hear about something like that. Yeah, so wonderful. So would you like to say a last few words about your new book and why everybody should rush out and buy it yes sure so remarkable creatures a guide to some of Ireland's zapping animals it's a nice and handy book which features 13 unlucky 13 endangered or critically endangered animal species and this book is uh, filled with various activities for children to keep them busy and and entertain. Uh, I just wanted to make, mention one curious fact. So uh, one of the fish endangered in Ireland is the European eel. And even though it's critically endangered, not only in Ireland, it's still allowed to fish it. So that's, you know, that's not, doesn't help. And that's, uh, that's, this should be kept on mind whenever we, we buy this fish. Maybe, no, we shouldn't just to, yeah, just to let it live a bit longer. That's another thing that has to change. Yes. So thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I absolutely love your book. I'm going to share it to everybody. And thank you, Mary. The best of luck with it. And if you do any more illustrations or books, just um, send us on some images and we'll post them up on Instagram. And well done for what you've done. Good. Thank you so much, Mary, for having me. That's been a pleasure. And I have to visit your beautiful sanctuary close to Galway. It's like I had a look at the website and it looks absolutely amazing. And the uh, piggy walk, that's something uh, I have to <laughs> definitely try. I've never walked a pig on the leash, so <laughs> that will be one of my things on the bucket list. <laughs> uh, I'll definitely take you for a pig walk. Yes, I'm actually doing one today at half past 12. So Amelia is the pig and she's a mm -hmm. total superstar she's had over 255 star reviews nice. she's had a, yeah she's had a couple of four star reviews one four star review said the pig is too fast <laughs> and the other one said the pig knows where she's going she doesn't need to be walked which is true okay, but, <laughs> very good. but she loves the walk as well she gets uh, extra treats when she's going around the walk and it's good for her to exercise and um, mm -hmm. keep her fit uh, she wags her tail. She loves people, and oh, nice. it's really a win-win. And it's a great way, way to get people outside into nature. Of course. They need and one to. question about about her: Has she ever found truffles? She hasn't. I don't think she knows what they are, and I'm not sure. Do they grow in Ireland? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think if she maybe I should buy one, which is very expensive, mm -hmm. obviously, and, and get her to course. sniff it. Yes. And, and then, then every time if she finds one, I'll give her a strawberry or a marshmallow because they're her favorite okay. things in that she'd do okay. anything for a marshmallow. <laughs> and by marshmallows, do you mean the plants or the, the no, sweet? Things? The sweet. She doesn't oh. get them very often. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Strawberries are a second best, but a marshmallow, <laughs> she literally she'd run okay. to Dublin for a oh, marshmallow. Oh, remember about that <laughs> when I come down. <laughs> Perfect. So, yeah, so we're actually opening up for the first time since Christmas in a partial way. So the cafe and the mm -hmm. gift shop is going to be open and the walks um, from next Wednesday, the 5th, 14th. 
from okay, Wednesday to Sunday. So yes. Okay, so that's good. You're opening and you're looking for new stuff. So that's brilliant. Yeah, it is. It's very good. It's very hopeful. And mm -hmm. the place is looking fantastic. The meadow, uh, we have a 15 acre meadow. I'm just looking out the window and mm -hmm. it's really at its peak at the moment. Um, the orchids are crazy this year. Mm -hmm. Pyramidal yeah. spotted, common spotted orchids everywhere. Um, nice. it's, so the place is looking fantastic and ready to welcome people back. Okay, brilliant. So, <laughs> so we'll see you sometime for a pink walk. Yes, definitely. Okay. And thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Mari. Talk to you later then. Bye bye. Have a good okay. day. Last week, we were delighted to announce the reopening of Borough Nature Sanctuary for the first time since Christmas. We welcomed our new partners, Michael Grady and Rose Kearney, who are bringing fresh energy into the cafe and shop. The exciting new menu being developed by Mike offers simple hearty food cooked well and the feedback has been five star. The menu is family friendly and the new outdoor covered seating area is a great addition. Rose is developing the gift shop with local craftspeople and designers who have turned their hobbies into mini businesses over the lockdown. She is passionate about nurturing new talent and giving this niche area a beautiful space to display their work. So a shout out for all these budding entrepreneurs. Adventurous stitches, wall hangings, soap naturally, fine wee lass headband scarves and jewellery, fluffy bjarg, reversible hand knitted hats, Lishna Mara, found glass jewellery and Tamsin Lundy Designs, fabulous felted pieces. More designers are lining up to join next week. Call in Wednesdays to Sundays 10 to 5 and say hi to Mike and Rose. Enjoy the walks and meet the animals.